in this class we will discuss cyclotron this cyclotron is an accelerator that means a device used to increase the energy or to accelerate charged particles we have already studied cyclotron in our higher secondary classes and as we know it is a spiral type of accelerator and was first developed by Lorentz in 1930. It consists of a hollow cylinder divided into two sections D1 and D. Each section is known as D because it resembles the English letter D. They are kept separated and placed inside a vacuum chamber. The D's are connected to a high frequency oscillator. The whole apparatus is placed between the pole pieces of a strong electromagnet. The magnetic field B is perpendicular to the plane of the D. So this is the picture. You can see it. So these are the D's. They resemble the English letter D and you are applying electric field between the pole pieces so sorry these d's and a magnetic field here magnetic field and electric field are acting perpendicular to each other so from this point your charged particle is starting and you can assume that when a positive ion with the charge Q and mass M is emitted from the source, it is accelerated toward the D having the negative potential at the instant. Due to the magnetic field, the positive ion moves along a semicircular path. That means this D is a hollow half sphere actually. So you have an electric field. Suppose initially this is positive and this is negative. You can see that this will be attracted towards a negative one. And uh, there will be no electric field inside a hollow cavity. That is a principle known to us. So inside this only magnetic field is acting. So in a magnetic field, a charged particle will follow a circular path. That is not this. So, it will be moving in a circular path. So, after some time, it will reach here. So, now what happens? By the time the particle arrives at the gap, the polarity of the D gets reversed and the particle is once again accelerated and enters the other D with a greater velocity describing a semicircle of greater radius like this it is it has reached here uh, so first it got an acceleration then with a constant velocity it is constant speed it is uh, in a semicircular path and here it gets accelerated again that means when the positive charge is reaching here at that instant, your polarities are again changed. That means this D2 is negative, D1 is positive. So it is again accelerated. It is completing a circle here. So when it is reaching here, again you have a change in polarity. So in each circle, uh, circle you can see that its speed is increasing. And from the equation for the motion of charged particle in electromagnet in a magnetic field you can see that when velocity increase, increases the radius of the, of the semicircular path also increases the charged particle of mass m describes a circular path of radius r when its velocity is v then the centripetal force and centrifugal forces are equal that means you can say that this BQV, that means QBV is the force experienced by a charged particle 
of charge Q which is moving with the velocity V in the magnetic field. And since it is moving in a circular path, the centripetal force you can write as mv square by r, v is velocity, r the radius of the circular path and m the mass. So from this v by r, one v cancels or v by r will be q, b q by m. And this b is a constant for a given apparatus, for a charge q is constant and also m you can consider as constant. So this is a constant factor, this v by r, where Here, a V is missing. QBV is the magnetic force and MV square by R is the centripetal force for circular motion. The time taken T to describe a semicircle is given by T equal to, that means that time to describe half circle. So, the distance it is moving is the perimeter of the half circle. Perimeter you are taking as 2 pi r, so half circle it is pi r. And if its velocity is v or speed is v, we have the equation v is equal to distance by time, or your time will be equal to distance by velocity. And here the distance is pi r, so it is pi r by v. And now we can substitute for this v by r from this equation v by r as qb by m, so it is qb. By m. So we are getting the expression for time as pi m by b q. Pi m by b q. So it is seen that t is independent of radius and velocity of the particle. That means at each time the particle is taking the same time to complete the semicircle. So, at the same instant, so after a particular time, you are changing the polarity. So, it will definitely work. The period of motion of a charged particle is independent of velocity under uniform magnetic field. This is the basic principle of cyclotron. If nu is the frequency of rotation, then that means it is circulating. So, 2 pi nu, that you can consider as omega, and we have the equation uh, V equals R omega, or omega is V by R, and V by R we have already got, we already got as B Q by M. So, this nu will be equal to, 2 pi nu is B Q by M, or nu equal to B Q by 2 pi M. So, this is the expression for cyclotron. Frequency. Since B Q by 2 pi m is constant, the frequency of rotation is a constant. The RF oscillator is adjusted to satisfy this condition in a given magnetic field B for the charge Q. After spiraling several times within the D's and Acquiring large velocity or kinetic energy, the particle is finally extracted out through a window by means of a deflector plate. So, this, this we have done in a cyclotron. And the cyclotron can accelerate protons, neutrons and alpha particles. At high velocities, BQ by 2 pi m is not a constant. We have just mentioned that this is independent of velocity etc. But, it is due to the relativistic mass variation of the particle. When velocity increases, this m also varies or it increases. As the velocity increases, the mass also increases. That means, the frequency of rotation of the particle decreases. And, the particle takes longer time to complete its semicircular path. It results in phase instability and the particle will not arrive at the gap just when the polarity reverses. However, this effect can be overcome by decreasing the frequency of the alternating voltage over short intervals to keep in step with the accelerated particles. This is the principle of synchrocyclotron. And normally this synchrocyclotron is used to accelerate electrons. 
and normally you are using beta tron for it. So this is the thing that means the relativistic mass variation is very uh, much appreciable or not appreciable thing or it is a very much effective or you can see it easily in electrons. So that is why you are not using uh, cyclotron to accelerate electrons. And that's all about cyclotron. These are the things already done to us. This was only a revision. Thank you.